You're listening to the Jim Mint Podcast by GFNF. Your weekly breakdown of sports cards, hobby news, and everything in between. And everything in between. Here's your hosts, Jake and Nico. Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to Gem Mint by GFNF. We are on episode 27. It is August 3rd, a little two-week hiatus for good reason. Um, as always, here with Jake, and we are going to get into the, uh, the the Natty recap episode here. What's going on, Jake? Uh, good to be back. We'll, uh, yeah. We'll vacation and back at it. Yeah. For sure, it was definitely a busy two weeks. Um, but yeah, happy to be back. So let's uh, let's just hop into it here. Uh, as always, let's let's go into like our retail breakdown. Pretty like I would say slow, um, kind of two weeks here. Uh, there was a target drop, which was mm-hmm. kind of interesting. It was there was some prison football, but there's also mosaic football, which was yeah. uh, it's like where are they finding us? But Whatever they draw, I mean, it seemed like it was a decent amount of stock too. Uh, honestly, yeah. not a great day to be on the road. <laughs> nope. Yeah, you and I both were uh, on the road, so we yeah. missed that. Um, uh, we did see Prison Basketball Blasters too, uh, which honestly didn't sit in stock for too too long. Um, they went rather quickly. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there was, I believe, Walmart last Wednesday. Uh, with, with prison basketball blasters, I think those sat for a bit because uh, they are five dollars more than uh, than targets. Yeah, do you see what people are pulling out of them though? Yeah, they seem pretty loaded. Um, I saw I saw a couple black finite one ones um, of some inserts, and then someone pulled a rookie rookie penmanship auto out of a blaster. So yeah, I yeah, agree. they seem pretty good. Um, yeah. It's like the select the select UFC. They started the blaster started to come in. I know Ronnie pulled a uh, elephant print uh, McGregor and a gold rookie. Um, oh. I pulled a numbered rookie out of mine. They seem pretty loaded too. So those are still in shout stock. Out but yeah, shout out Ronnie. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then we'll be looking for another Walmart drop uh, hopefully later today. But we'll yeah. see. Um. KSR does have a, a new cookie uh, solution, which I guess seemed to work pretty well last week. Yeah. Um, yeah, it seemed like it worked for most people. You uh, need a lot of them, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's always seemed to be the kind of how to approach it, just have a ton of them. But um, yeah, hopefully it gets a little bit more uh, streamlined and, and uh, makes it a little easier for those who struggle with that that part. Yeah. Um, in store wise, uh, more Prism uh, in Walmart's, no Megas yet, uh, and then Chronicles Football Retail is uh, showing up in stores. Um, I don't think we've seen Megas for that either. Uh, no, not yet. And then we also have uh, Barnes and Noble first one to get Optic Football. So uh, they they have blasters and they seem pretty loaded from what I've seen hit wise. Yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah, which is good. So uh, I've always been more of a fan of Optic than Prism. Just the way it looks but i don't know maybe that's just me i know prism is the is the better seller over time but optic to me is a lot more fun to rip yeah oh for sure definitely in retail wise right. too um but yeah i think that's pretty much it on the retail side of things uh we can get to some uh hobby news here uh ebay they've been uh kind of pumping their their vault system uh just as everyone else is um, so they did a uh, kind of like a launch event with uh, Miles Teller from Top Gun in uh, Chase Utley. Uh, they did this like pretty interesting thing where they had to uh, kind of draft uh, $25,000 worth of cards to put uh, into the vault. Um, <clears throat> and I know uh, here, here were Miles uh, Teller's uh, picks. So he went with uh, PSA 10 uh, Bowman Chrome Trout Rookie. Uh, 52 Solid. Willie Mays PSA 2, uh, 2001 Topps Chrome Pujols PSA 10, uh, Otani Bowman Chrome Auto 9.5, and then a uh, Topps Traded Tiffany Ken Griffey Jr. Rookie PSA 10. Yeah. So that yeah, nice lineup. Yeah, came came into a uh, hair under 25,000. Um, 
but yeah, pretty cool. He's dead to me for picking a cardinal, but it's fine. Yeah, pool holes, man. Come on. Um, Garbage. <laughs> yeah, pretty interesting. I mean, this whole vault stuff is just getting crazy. Like the amount of partnerships and um, options you have now is is nuts. Um, right. We, I mean, we saw a lot of it at the national too, like the collector's vault stuff like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, interesting to see how you know some of them get uh, an advantage over the others, but. Um, yeah, time will tell. Uh, what not? They do another round of funding, raising valuation at three point seven billion. Uh, they had an insane presence um at the national. Uh, it was yeah, they did. I mean, more or less like a whole quadrant. Uh, it was just plastered with what not stuff. Um, yeah, they had a whole they had a whole section. The basically the whole section leading up into the breaker pavilion. Yeah, you would have thought wall, the wall. breaker pavilion was just then. Um, yeah. But you, know, you had you know you had other big breakers uh, throughout there, so uh, they did host a, a pretty big giveaway. Uh, Eighty six Fleer and two thousand three Topps Chrome uh, basketball packs. Um, I think you just had to tune into their stream and and uh, pretty much just, like enter their giveaway there. Mm-hmm. I don't think any monsters. Well, there's a couple Jordans. Uh, I think they ended up grading like PSA seven, PSA six. Um, at least for the Fleer Jordans, I, I don't know what the stickers graded, but. Not going to argue with a free pack that you're pulling the Jordan out of, no matter what it grades. No, nah, you can't complain there. No, definitely not. Um, <laughs> they did. They did. In case you're wondering, have the crop tops on. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The uh, the streamers were there. Yeah. You could definitely hear them on uh, on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. No good. Yeah. They were they were very loud. Um, just some other stuff from uh from from the Natty here. One one big issue was definitely like service and wi-fi was nearly non-existent um it was bad like you can you legitimately couldn't look anything up even the free wi-fi was just it was just bad um couldn't get a hold of anyone to find out where people were yeah Yeah, i i wasn't i don't know how it was in chicago but like a lot better like with the like well here well here the they had like the kind of flags up top with the booth, yeah. like kind of like uh, the rows, know, the every, row numbers, yeah, every hundred or whatever. But like, no tables had numbers on them. No. So how like someone's like, oh, I'm booth twelve sixty eight. It's like, all right, well, where the hell is that? Yeah, yeah you got to find <laughs> like, a whole row. Like, find okay, row. you're just like searching around like an idiot. Like we were looking for card collector too, and like we had to look at a been... YouTube video to find out where. Yeah, it was. I mean, and you couldn't get the video to play, and they, they had a map. Yeah. They kept saying reference the map on the on the web page, but you couldn't, the Wi-Fi was so bad. You couldn't get, you couldn't get to pull up. I mean, yeah. I heard multiple people say that they had deals going down where they had to make the deal and then go into the parking lot outside or step outside the building to complete the PayPal transaction, come back in. Yeah, that's true. You're trying to send a lot of money yeah. wires and stuff. Um, yeah, that was definitely one of the toughest things about it. Uh, helped to, uh, to have your, comps ready and you know look all that stuff up uh, yeah. ahead of time so that was definitely one of the one of the downfalls of uh the ac show um one of the probably the biggest things of the week uh was top silver packs so Ooh, yeah so those have typically been paper cards uh but this year they were actually chrome cards um you know all after 2022 Bowman chrome yeah, they went back to the 2019. 2019, they were Chrome, and then after that, they started last year yeah. with their just crap paper. So, I mean, these things, and I mean, you have a ton of good rookies that they put in these, and these things were flying. Um, it was, I mean, for us, we went ahead and, and went with the archive signatures. So basically, if you don't know how it works, you buy a product that's eligible for a pack, you know, you buy it from Blowout, Steel City, whatever, and then you bring it over to the Tops booth sealed, and they cut it open, and you get a pack or two based on what you get. And they have like a little, you know, a little sheet with it. Um, so we went with archive signatures because those were seventy a box, I think, uh, yeah. and you got one pack per. So it, in it, one, it was the easiest to carry around uh, after you opened it because it's just one card, not not packs. Um, and two, it was a like, cost effective. So. Uh, we got a case, uh, 20 boxes, so we got 20 packs, did pretty well. Um, yeah. yeah, ended Don't with... Don't spoil it, though. Oh, oh it, is yeah. it in the big polls? It's in the polls of the week, baby. Okay, okay, I won't spoil it. 
Um, yeah, that was probably archive signatures was probably a big one, and then uh, uh, top series two jumbos were like you couldn't find a case of that, even boxes by the end of the day yeah. on Friday. Um, it was that yeah, it was that crazy because you get two packs per jumbo. Uh, did, I, did I tell you I found out where they went? Where? All the breakers bought them up so they could add silver packs to their breaks. Yeah, makes sense. Wild. Yeah. So that was yeah that was definitely probably like the second uh, most sought after product to get packs. But yeah, tops ran out uh, Saturday morning. They were completely out of silver packs <laughs> at like nine o'clock that morning. So um, yeah, they were definitely the, the kind of like the chase of the of the weekend. Honestly, easiest way to make money. Um, yeah, easy, easy money. I mean, even the base cards, as we know, I mean, the base Julio Rodriguez cards were doing 140 out of the gate, and they're settled in right around 100 now. Um, nuts. Absolutely there's nuts. Not a, there's not a single base card that was sell. You know, we sold ours, almost every single one, for, for $10 or more, and some of them 20 yeah. 30 Yeah, so, I mean, they're nice cards. They were yeah, all definitely. refractors, so yep. the base cards were refractors. Um, but yeah, they were cool. They were fun to, to, to rip. Um, I guess one of the other big stories here, this is, this is pretty crazy. So the, there's an SGC nine, five fifty two mantle. Um, it was on display at the heritage auction stand. Uh, so it is currently on auction. Um, let me see if I can pull it up and see if, uh, if it's gone up anymore. Last I checked, it was, it was at about 6 million. Um, Let's see, why is it not plastered on their front page? That's interesting. Oh, there it is. Uh, do, 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 do. There it is. It is at five, uh, five million eight hundred fifty thousand. So, a little over seven million with the buyer's premium. Uh, still twenty four days left on this. So they had this on display. It was pretty cool because they had the original screw down that it was in. Uh, yeah. As well as the, uh, you know, the, the letter of sale. Um, so it was purchased in, what, 91, was it? Um, yep. For like $50,000. Um, and it wasn't graded until recently, which what is nuts. Deal. So it's just been sitting in this screw down. Uh, it's not even a re uh, like a recessed screw down. It's just a normal flat screw down, which is kind of shocking. It didn't get uh, squished or anything. Um but we looked at it. Uh, it honestly is light light years ahead of of any of the PSA tens, in my opinion. Um, it's an insane copy. It just it almost looks fake. It's like right. it's, yeah, it's insane. Like it's from 1952, and this thing looks like it. It looks better than some of the cards that come out of the packs uh, today. Um, right. I mean, absolutely nuts. Uh, this will probably be the only time this card of this grade ever comes to sale i mean people think 10 million i'm i'm going 15 to 18 uh yeah. I, I don't know where you think it ends but i think 10 million is way too low i think now that the nationals come i think if this would have been a month ago it probably would be closer to 10 but yeah i think now that the nationals passed the hobbies hyped back up and yeah i could see it doing 15 i mean yeah. i'm gonna guess somewhere around the 12 5 range but it if it hits 15 that would not shock me i just there's gonna be a couple big big fish that, that want this and they know this is their only chance uh this is again like they, they go into a story about you know how he kind of fought with if he wants to sell it or not um but yeah this none of the tens are ever going to come to sale uh yeah. <laughs> this is the only nine five that i know of um it's just, yeah crazy crazy card um it's the, the mantle market in general right now is really starting to heat up. Um, I think 51, 52, 53 uh, are going to see significant growth uh, over the next few months, yeah. um, especially 51 Bowman. It's already an expensive card. Like a one's going to probably run you anywhere in the 8 to 10, 11 range. Um, 52 Bowman's another one that's pretty cheap. Um for the grade, and it's pretty easy to find like a decent copy of that, and then uh, 53 tops, uh, as well. 
because uh, you you know you don't have tops uh, mantle cards for 54 and 55, and then everything else is just kind of. I mean, 56 is a, a pretty big one, but everything else is kind of just whatever. Um, so it'd be interesting to see kind of how this market plays out. The 52s were were going crazy uh, at the natty price wise and everything. So um, yeah. yeah, just be cool to to check in in a couple weeks and see where that ends. Yeah. Um, uh, this is something cool I wasn't aware of. So the National will be under new management in 2024. Uh, yeah. The JBJ Management Group steps in to take over. Uh, what are they? Are they part of anything else, or what are they? Like, what's their story? Uh, you know? They're involved in some sports management companies uh, with agents and stuff like that. But their big thing is uh, basically rebuilding companies. So the National itself, if you guys don't know, is a company that basically puts on this card show but they're also involved in a lot of east coast shows uh the group that currently does it and what they the do is hire out their planning services just like you would like for a wedding like a wedding planner or something they hire a planning company a management company to basically do everything from uh tickets to booking venues to everything like this um and they apparently the rumor was that they were unhappy with the current management team is kind of getting stale they've had the one it's another three letter agency that they've had for a while i can't remember off the top of my head but um they've had them for the last 10 years and their deal ends after next year's back in chicago in 2023 so this jbj will be stepping in but uh i don't know if uh they're a little bit unhappy i have a hard time i know i heard I don't know if you had this confirmed or not, but the rumor was that they got the Atlantic City Convention Center for free for this um, to bring business to the city. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, that yeah, was definitely... I'm not sure if that's true. Um, I don't think Atlantic City is going to be hosting anytime soon again. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people were complaining. I didn't really think it was that bad, like from a getting there. And like getting back perspective, oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, getting there is significant. Like you'll see next year in Chicago, Chicago. I mean, Chicago's twice the size, building and you know wise and and how it's set up, but it's it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, I mean, it's like it, the Chicago highways, the, the the parking, just the mass, how big it is, and how long you got to walk from the parking garage to just get to the front of the building because the building's massive. This was definitely easier. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I really didn't think it was that bad. Like. We weren't even staying in a hotel that's like near the convention center and was what, like a five minute Uber and the oh, Uber yeah. takes you right to the front door. Like, okay, there's a little bit of traffic right in the front, but it really yeah. wasn't that bad and it wasn't hard to get an Uber or anything. I, mean, I think the I think the I think the the internet stuff is really what tipped people over. Yeah. I mean that yeah, that was pretty rough because it's you just can't have that. You know, when there's yeah. that kind of money. You know, I mean, you saw some of the transactions going down when there's yeah. that kind of money on the floor. You just you got to have it working. Yeah, I, I really didn't think the location was that bad, though. Like, I, no, I and maybe I'm saying that because I live an hour away. But like, even so, I mean, it's like what now a little over an hour drive from Philly Airport or Newark. Yeah. It's I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's, it was tons of entertainment, too, obviously, um, as we got to experience a little bit of uh, chucking some dice. Little, you know, nice yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> um, we forgot there was a card show in town at one point. Yeah, uh, yeah, we found that out late in the game, yeah, but yeah. can't walk away from a heater, hundred dollar <laughs> horn. Shout out, Ronnie. Um, but yeah, no, I, 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 I thought it was fine. Um, again, you know, I didn't, exp- we didn't experience because we we brought cash and stuff like that, and so we didn't experience too much of the internet problem other than not being able to get a hold of each other if we had to, or or missing calls and stuff like that, but. Yeah, the location wise was fine. Super easy drive from from there. That you know the meetups and the and the trade nights and everything went off without a hitch, I believe. Uh, I just I know so next year's back in Chicago, twenty twenty four is in Cleveland, uh, which is interesting. Um, yeah, have they ever done it in like in Texas at all or no? I don't think so. Um, why not? I don't understand why they don't do that. I feel like Texas is like the perfect spot for it. Yeah, well, the rumor is now, so it, it, it's in Chicago every other year, no matter what. So next year, Chicago, Cleveland, Chicago back in 2025. And then the rumor is in 2026, which has not been announced yet, is they're looking at somewhere in Florida. Um, Ugh. I don't know so, about that. I'd rather go to Texas. <laughs> I would definitely rather go to Texas. Um, I feel like. 
I would sweat like I'm getting paid to down in Florida. It's yeah. humid in the summer. Yeah, that does sound terrible. <laughs> I mean, Texas is also really freaking hot, but... I mean, um, shout out Ace Love, but, you know, the way Ace golfs, if we're golfing down in Florida at the Natty Day, he yeah. can be eaten by... As much as he's in the water, that guy's going to get eaten by a crocodile. Yeah, that's true. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or Gator. One of them. <laughs> yeah, one of the two. Um, but, yeah, cool. Well, yeah, we'll keep track on it and uh, already looking forward to uh, to Chicago next year. Um, but, yeah, so uh, Golden, they pretty much Golden and PSA are in bed with each other. Um, Ken Golden and Nat Turner to just give you that visual, uh, you know, Ugh. in the brain. Um, Thank you. <laughs> this is per- okay. I I kind of don't hate this. I hate that it's golden, but I like the idea. Um, basically, they have this called this like program called Rip and Flip, where essentially you can send their card and you get a two week turnaround for grading with PSA for cards over five hundred dollars, um, no upfront costs, and then it goes right to auction with Golden, and then your yep. you know your grading fees just deducted from uh, whatever you make. Um, it's cool. Yeah. Um, I like the idea. Yeah, the problem with Golden is they just offer no sort of advertisement or push for anything that's not a million dollar card. Um, so a lot of stuff is just selling really low. Um, yeah. but the two week turnaround is pretty sweet. Um, interesting. That's actually there's two programs here. That's grading with Golden. The rip and flip is they partner with your guys. Well, well, they're not your guys, but they they're out by you. The rip the rip and flip is is their partnered uh, breakers. If a breaker pulls a card, um, oh okay. There's no grading fees with rip and flip. So like filth bomb, they partner with filth bomb breaks mm-hmm. and the coffee breakers, roadshow cards and stuff. So if you get, I'm sure they're going to be partnering with the backyard break boys and all the big graders. But basically, if the breaker pull the rip and flip is if a breaker pulls you a monster card. They in turn send it directly to Golden. There's no grading fee. Same thing. Turnaround time of two weeks, and uh, and the 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 grading with Golden I think is is anyone like so if you just you know like if we pulled that, well I'm not gonna say what we pulled one of our cards. If we wanted to just send it to Golden, they would get it graded two weeks as long as it's valued at four ninety nine and above. They got their you know front of the line access with PSA, and yeah. it goes bam right on their platform. It Which looks like they cool. it looks like they do charge for grading, but again, it's not it's just not up front. It's oh, just, they charge on the rip and flip too. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's just they're just trying to say no upfront fees. Gotcha. Um, but okay, so this is the same program basically. It's just one is pulled by a, <laughs> yeah, one is pulled by a breaker, and and one is you pull yourself and send it. Yeah, yep, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I think we talked about this two weeks ago with, I think, was it Beckett that had the best card shop in America vote going on? Yeah. Um, well, it ended up being Card Vault, which is uh, in Gillette Stadium uh, in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have been named America's best card shop. I know it's a pretty sick shop. Um, yeah. The owner's very active on like YouTube and stuff. Um, my buddy's been there a couple times. He said prices are what you'd expect it to be there. Uh, you know, anything crazy, but probably just like for cool. my boys at real breaks. Yeah. You know, but it's cool. Card vault, super cool. That's, we talked about them. If you remember on the podcast a few weeks back, they, they signed that deal. They're opening a bunch more. And so they did a casino deal. So they're opening some card vaults and some casinos across the East coast. So yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for the hobby stuff. And you have anything else from the natty or can we move on to sports? Oh yeah. Let's move on to sports. Sweet. Um, so Deshaun Watson was suspended six games in the NFL final ruling. Um, I think it's going to be more, uh, I think it's going to end up being a year. Um, cause it's still, I, I don't understand exactly how this all worked. Well, he was suspended by the, was it the judge? I, I'm very the confused judge, on how this exactly went so down. The, so the judge ruled, so this is actually the NFL final ruling cause the, the NFL put the, determination in the in the judge's hands so it was basically like uh you know a court bench hearing so there has to be new findings and new allegations brought which there is still current uh civil cases out there um but as he will play this year um so after the six games he will be eligible to play and then we'll basically if, if new stuff gets brought up we'll basically challenge until the end of the season so he's he's playing after six games 
Well, he may. I don't think so though, because so the NFL appealed the decision because the they right. yeah because they want a, a tougher penalty against him. They want him gone yeah. for a year. He's yeah. going to be gone a year. I'll put my money on it. I'll put my money that he's, he's got, done hundred percent. Nope. He's, he's got. Isn't what's his name is? Uh, no way, bro. He's hundred percent gone. Uh, a year. Who's the big agent that that is uh, Harper and all them? Uh, Rosenhaus. No, it's. He's got that that super agent. Oh, maybe. Yeah. What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do if he is gone? Again? What do you mean? Who's quarterback in that team? Oh, I don't know. Chubb. Let's have him play running back <laughs> and just a wildcat the oh, entire year. Wildcat. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I uh, I got my money on he's gone a year, but it's weird too because that six games is why. I mean, Josh. Uh, what's the the old Patriot receiver that got in trouble? Josh Gordon. I mean, I mean, Zeke got, got twenty five games. games. For doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. So he got Josh. Josh Gordon got got twenty five games for weed. Yeah, this guy sucked you got Calvin all. Ridley who's out for a year for gambling on his own yeah. team. So I don't know. Pete Rule. We'll see. Thanks. He should be gone a year. Yeah, um, I agree. I agree with how long he should be gone. Yeah. Uh, apparently the ESPYS happened. Had no idea. Uh, <laughs> Otani won uh, Athlete of the Year. Uh, kind of not a surprise there. Dude's absolutely dominant. Um, Soto, he rejected that $440 million deal and he got traded to the Padres who Monster. now have Soto, Tatis and Machado. Um, they pretty much traded most of their big name prospects, Abrams, Hassel, uh, Mackenzie Gore, James Wood. Um, hopefully one of those pan out <laughs> for yeah. the nationals, but yeah, he was gone. Um, so First games tonight, uh, I assume seven or, yeah. you know, eight here. Um, Slam Diego. Yeah, going to be cool to see. Um, Vince Scully, the voice of the Dodgers for 67 years, uh, he has passed away at the age of 94. What about so, him? Yeah, big time. He um, called not just the Dodgers. He was the he was the voice. He called the, uh, the Joe Montana the catch. Yeah. Like he's the most iconic voice in the history of sports, man. Yeah. Yeah, tons of uh, old videos and stuff going around on Twitter today. Um, the Dolphins, what a goddamn mess. <laughs> they, <laughs> their owner is such a jackass. Uh, yeah. So they lost their 2023 first-round pick and their 2024 third, I think, uh, for tampering with uh, Tom Brady during recruiting. There's also tampering with, uh, oh, my God. Who is the Saints coach? Uh, Peyton. Gary Payton or Sean Payton, uh, Sean yeah, Payton. him as well. Tampering with him, I think as recent as this past year. Um, well, quit so, tampering. Yeah, so they lost picks. They're a bunch of idiots. Um, I like this mattress Mac because he's a mush. Yeah. Uh, he he put two million dollars <laughs> on the Astros to win the World Series, uh, which would pay out twelve million. So double down, mattress Mac. I like that bet. Um, he's got it. He's good for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cam Smith uh, holds off Rory to win the Open, um, and he is going to join Live Golf for ninety million. Did you see they offered Tiger like almost a billion dollars to join Live? Yeah, eight hundred million to a billion. Yeah, I mean, and he said no. Well, he's made of money. That yeah, dude's got Michael it. Jordan money. Yeah, pretty crazy though. I, I don't understand. I'm so confused. Where I know they say like blood money. I'm so confused where all this money's coming from. Um, <laughs> the oil, man. It's the oil I guess, families. yeah. Uh, NASCAR announced their first ever street race to happen next year in Chicago uh, against the uh, the backdrop of Lake Michigan. That sounds pretty sweet. As long as it stays right there and doesn't move any farther south or west. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get some get some fresh bullet holes in the side of those cars. That's true. That's part. I mean, it's part of the drive, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It'd be yeah. sweet if they did a street race in Chicago for F1. Ooh. Be all about that. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, Rob Manfred. Yeah. <laughs> Hack City. He uh, yeah. goes on record saying, quote, I reject the premise minor league players don't make a living wage, which resulted in a ton of minor league players that don't make a living wage saying so on Twitter. Right. Um, Good for them. Yeah. Backfires. Huge. Shocker that uh manfred has no idea what the hell he's talking about um not a surprise there though 
Uh, Madden 23, this is always such a big story. Every year Madden comes out with the Madden uh, rankings. <laughs> There's a bunch of unhappy players. Debo oh, Samuel, yeah. I assume yeah. he's ranked too low. Speed, um, I think, was that he was... Uh, speed. Yeah. Uh, Darius Leonard was also there. Um, and this last one, I don't even know if he has a leg to stand on, but Justin Fields, what was he upset about? Let's, you know... He was real low comparatively to his class, which is ridiculous. But okay, uh, I mean, he he doesn't deserve a monster high ranking, but you know, yeah, Zach, you know, the milf hunter, uh, Zach Wilson, you know, has got ten points on him, and and he's terrible. Yeah, yeah he's also trash. He's not good. Um, well, don't say also trash. We don't know if Justin does. Hey, you get planted. You get planted <laughs> now, twenty times. Trash. <laughs> you get planted twenty times a game with no offensive line. You know, I'm yeah. throwing twenty picks too. That's fair. That's fair. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. side note, real quick, because we breezed over. Do you think that Liv is looking for two? You know, twenty-five to thirty something golfers that are non-professional. That they probably should. I think I know where they could start looking. Because the way we spanked Ace and Garrett out there in AC, um, GF and F Open champions. Yeah, I think that. I mean, I would t- I would do it for ten percent of what they offer, Tiger. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I can do ten percent. Um, we should probably Paul's get live. Ace and Garrett to also join, so we just have like easy wins each time. Yeah, yeah. So well, I mean, yeah, I mean, high school golf team would have easy wins against that, but yeah, yeah, Paul's, so true. Paul's live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spencer Torgelson, he was optioned to the AAA Mud Hens, so he was in the mud and struggling. Yeah. So he gone, yeah, he gone. He'll be back. Give him some time. Kalena came in out of the, the mud. He can come out of the mud. He uh, and, and because of that, I took him off. Uh, might as well do that now. Our, our rookie update slash line check in. Yeah, go ahead, hit it. Um, I did take him off since he's out, but Wander Franco's still out. Unsure on his return. I think uh, is he having surgery? I can't remember. I, I think, think so. Yeah, I think he is too. Um, basically, the big dogs, J. Rod, Bobby Witt, they stayed pretty static. So, you know, they're still hitting well. Uh, added a couple points to their OPS and stuff like that, but basically stayed across the board and from average down to slugging, right around the two seventy to two seventy five mark for Julio. Two fifty two for Bobby Witt. Um, Julio's OPS is 816, which is incredible um, as a rookie. Bobby Witt, 743, uh, which was the same as last week. Uh, Adley is on a tear. Adley Rutschman's our guy. Uh, big boost this week. He jumped 40 points in batting average. He's up to 255. Um, I actually got to see him play at Orioles Park on this la- on the way to the National on Tuesday out in Baltimore. Super cool. Camden Yards. Um, he's up 348 on base percentage, 450 on the slugging, and almost at 800, 798 on the OPS. So he's playing great. Uh, Michael Harris, a little bit of a downturn, but still, you know, at the top of the rookies and batting average um, at 280. He's 320, uh, which is a little bit up, and 478 on the slugging, 798 on the OPS, same as Adley. O'Neill Cruz, uh, basically static, just like everyone else up top. Uh, 209 on the batting average, uh, 248 on OBP, slugging 442, and 695 OPS. So uh, rookies are staying solid. Adley's really starting to play and tear it up to join the big boys on top. And Spencer Torkelson is somewhere in Connecticut riding a bus to the games. Poor guy. Yeah. Poor guy. But yeah. At, pretty- least, Rob, at least Rob Manfred thinks he lives <laughs> his living way. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> as long as he thinks so. <laughs> yeah. that. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of stud rookies this year. It's nice to see. Yep. Um, but cool. Let's hop into the high rollers, some high dollar sales. Uh, this is an insane sale. A uh, Daniel Jones uh, 2019 National Treasures uh, Shield RPA 101 BGS 95 for fifty six thousand um, dollars. Yeah, I will be shocked if they do not lose money on that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is a pretty cool card. I'm surprised this even came up for sale at this point. Uh, 2014 Bowman Mookie Betts Red Auto out of five. Uh, BGS 9510 for 71,000. Still pretty strong sale for uh, the Mookie uh, market, but definitely lower compared to some of the younger guys. Uh, 86 Fleer Jordan PSA 10, 204,000. Still continues to you know sell you know pretty high. Um, 
1819 National Treasures Luca uh, RPA out of 99 BGS 9510 for 222,000. Signed by his mom. Yes, yeah, signed by his mom. Uh, 9798 Skybox Premium MJ Star Rubies BGS 85 for 228,000. Skybox you know, continues to, to sell for premium here. And then wow. uh, 2017 National Treasures Black Patrick Mahomes RPA out of five BGS nine with ten auto for three hundred ninety three thousand. Uh, pretty big, right. yeah, pretty big sale there. The Mahomes market definitely dipped. Um, yeah, but that's I mean almost four hundred thousand. That's that's a pretty big sale. I'm uh, thinking Smart Money says we're going to see a soda or two on that list next week. Yeah, we could. We definitely could. Um, but yeah, before we get into our massive pulls, um, you want to make sure you get those hits into uh, you know something with a little bit of protection here, and uh, Collector Caps has the solution for you. Uh, missing piece to every top loaded card. Uh, not only do their patented caps fit snugly over top loaders to give your cards 360 degree protection, but they come in multiple colors um, with a nice little you know parallel matching storage option. Um, you know you want these to, to send cards to the mail, just put them on display. Just you know nice little. Uh, way to show off your, your, your cards here and uh, you want to make sure that it you know shows up not sliding out of the top loader like the eBay uh, authentication does um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah be sure to check them out on Twitter and Instagram at collector caps in uh, collectorcaps.shop and use code GFNF for uh, 15% off your order um, but yeah let's hop into the massive pulls um, we'll start with uh, your boys the on the podcast here Save the best for first. Yeah. Uh, nice little 2022 Bowman uh, National Convention Mike Trout Auto out of 15. Something yeah, light. Maybe. Something light. Um, Love it. Yeah, big time. Uh, then a 2021 uh, Bowman Draft uh, Marcelo Mayer Superfractor 101 Sports Card Outlet. Uh, one of our members is actually in that break. Um, I might have been McSandy. It was some I forget who it was. Someone in the card server was in that break though. Uh That's that it was pulled. Break. Yeah. And nonchalantly it was like, Oh yeah, the one one mayor got pulled. We're like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Biggest card in the product. Yeah. Uh twenty one Chronicles football, Zach Wilson, Prism Black Gold Auto out of ten from Blaze. Uh twenty one Prism Football, Josh Allen Auto. Uh little personal Facebook rip. Uh and then I think some it's cool that you can pull his Pull Josh Allen base autos out of prison. That's nice. Oh, yeah. 2021. Uh, and then some optic first off the line from this year a uh, Trey Lance downtown mojo uh, from 101 card shop, and then a Trevor Lawrence downtown black Pandora from the uh, the uh, crop top boys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a, those black Pandoras are beautiful cards. Yeah, they're sweet. They're pretty sweet. Um, yeah. Uh, upcoming drop wise, optic football. We've we already saw a hit Barnes and Noble, so that should be pretty soon here. Um, and then uh, select football, I think, actually got pushed back to August twenty fourth is the hobby release date. Um, apparently, Panini not to not to go off the the rails here. Fanatics bought the company that Panini uses for printing, <laughs> so they kind of have like control over the printers. Uh, insane, absolutely insane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, shout out to fanatics who just buying everything. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. You got anything else? I don't think so. Still recovering from the national. Need another week or so to get back in the full swing of it. Yeah, yeah. Pretty uh, pretty short episode this week, guys. But uh, we'll be back at it next week. Maybe we'll uh, we are getting a little close. Maybe we'll do. Um, I don't know when we're doing our draft for the fantasy league, but we'll we'll do like a little breakdown. Uh, whenever, we're gonna we do. That. Like we did the weekly, uh, like we did the weekly national stuff. We'll do a weekly fantasy football outlook and stuff as yeah. we get into football season too. Yep, yep. We're yeah, we're almost there. Can't wait. Um, yeah. But cool. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and we will see you guys next week. Peace.